Support WrestleTalk! Give us a subscribe. Seth Rollins extracted Rey Mysterio's eyeball. I've been meaning to talk to you about that, Seth. You might want to lay low for a while. Braun Strowman set a guy on fire. I've been meaning to talk to you about that, Braun. You might want to lay low for a while. And Bray Wyatt drowned Braun Strowman in one of the weirdest shows WWE have put on in, well, for, I guess the last couple of months. I've been meaning to talk to you about that, WWE. You might want to lay low for a while. I'm Ali Davis. Super kick the subscribe button to get daily wrestling news videos like my review of the horror show at Extreme Rules at AOL.com 2020 in about 10 minutes. After Kevin Owens beat Murphy in the pre-show match, presumably building KO's feud with Rollins, considering Seth also won his I versus an I match, the main card opener was the New Day defending their SmackDown Tag Team Championships against my favorite Quizzlemania round, the Artist Collective, in a tables match. All four men started off hot and carried that pace through the entire match, built around a series of table teasing spots. But Kofi Kingston's strategy of stacking tables like their pancakes back fired when Cesaro countered a Hurricane Rana to the outside into an awesome powerbomb on Kofi through two tables, meaning the Artist Collective are now the new tag team champions in a fun 10 minute opener. Next had all the main roster lady faces standing in a row, but for once I didn't mind. Having Alexa Bliss, Nikki Cross, Asuka and Kairi Sane give each other a pep talk in advance of facing their shared Bailey and Sasha Banks foes was a really nice touch, not just getting over the challenges, but also the champion's dominance. The only thing it was missing was more Kyrie Sane playing a recorder. The first half of this two brand spanning storyline saw Cross take on Bailey in a neat title match, which saw the Knights first throwing someone into the plexiglass screens at ringside spot, which is such a pro wrestler thing to do. We put something in for safety and wrestlers just use it to hurt each other more. Heel shenanigans helped Bailey retain, where Banks slid her the boss knuckles behind the referee's back, which we got a really arty shot of after Afterwards. Nice job, WWE camera person. It's like a perfume commercial. The next match, however, of Apollo Crews versus MVP for the United States title was scrapped when Tom Phillips announced Crews hadn't passed his pre-match physical, as he's still injured from a throwaway full Nelson spot last month. This quite clearly wasn't the original plan and it's speculated the real reason Cruz is absent is coronavirus related, seeing that him missing from TV coincided with the reported Performance Center outbreak last month. So MVP just walked down to the ring, cut a promo, and declared himself the United States Champion. Again, because he'd already done that when he unveiled the new title design on Raw. Apollo's kayfabe friends Ricochet and Cedric Alexander didn't even come out to challenge him, which made the whole angle seem very last minute. Until this point, we'd had a tables match, a straight singles match, and a scrapped match. Hardly the horror show gimmick WWE had promoted this Extreme Rules event as. That then changed with one of the most ridiculous things the company has done this year. And that's saying something. The thing is, Rollins and Rey Mysterio actually had a really good in-ring match, particularly one based around their eye for an eye feud. Mysterio has this uncanny ability to completely freshen up his opponent's offense by blending their moves with his own, like Seth throwing him out the ring penguin slide style onto a table and an awesome delayed falcon arrow on the ring apron right at the start, which is the hardest part of the ring, don't you know? Frog splashes, sunset flip power bombs into the plexiglass, and between between most sequences, they went for each other's eyes, fitting with their feud's overall story. This was a good match, but nobody is going to be talking about the storytelling or even Seth's really subtle character work at the end, because WWE made a fake prosthetic eyeball fall out of Ray's face, which prompted Rollins to... He's gonna... He's gonna... He's gonna puke! Puke! Actually, vomit chunks at ringside, because ultimately, WWE had set this match up to fail. This could have been a really good old school revenge hardcore match with an eye injury angle at the end, but making the stipulation the winner can only be decided when an eyeball is literally extracted from a wrestler's socket guarantees an unobtainable always going to disappoint finish, which it did. And in true WWE style, the gimmick will likely be immediately undermined. 
just like how when Ray was thrown off the roof at Money in the Bank to be saved by falling on another, smaller roof just a few feet below, Lucha Luck, a medical Caruso alert. Later on revealed, there was a smaller eye just slightly behind the main eye, as experts were optimistic that if the optic nerve is not severed, there's a chance Mysterio can maintain his vision. So it'll likely never really play into anything ever again. To zoom out from the kayfabe though, the finish raises questions over Ray's future with WWE. As of just two weeks ago, he was reportedly working without a contract, which had expired the other month. One theory was that if Mysterio lost here, that could be used to write him out of the company. Thankfully, the eye for an eye and all the audience go blind because Seth vomited match was followed by the match of the night, Asuka vs Sasha Banks for the Raw Women's title, which I still think should have main evented. I thought they had an awesome back and forth match, with Banks looking just as credibly threatening as her NXT boss days. She even went full Pete Dunne in parts, manipulating the finger joints and teasing having a bite. In the story of the whole night though, I've seen a lot of people praise the in-ring match but then hate on the finish. And I get that. It was a heavily booked sequence of Sasha, hopefully just working a knee injury, Banks tapping behind the referee's back, the referee getting accidentally green misted, Bailey using the belt on Asuka, and then putting on the ref shirt to count the pin and declare Sasha the new champion. Which WWE.com has since said isn't the case, as Asuka still figuratively, as opposed to literally, holds the belt. It's an old dusty finish, which can be frustrating, but I actually really didn't mind it. I'm very invested in the Banks Bailey power Trip. And I think this is a decent B-level pay-per-view angle to progress that. Not every match has to end 100% clean. This is WWE Sports Entertainment after all, which we got another dose of with Ziggler vs McIntyre. Mm. WWE's video package editing team is so good, the promo they ran next made Dolph Ziggler vs Drew McIntyre feel like an actually well thought out and long term booked feud, when in truth, it's a filler storyline with a severely lacklustre build. But to their credit, WWE booked the perfect gimmick match reveal to at least make it dramatically interesting. As Drew has been booked so incredibly strongly since winning the title, there was no way Dolph posed a credible threat, so Ziggler revealed his chosen stipulation was extreme rules for him only. While Drew retaining was still very predictable, this at least gave the match some drama, with the possibility McIntyre might beat himself by accidentally putting Dolph through a table or getting wound up by a low blow, the gold standard of which is Randy Orton vs Christian Money in the Bank 2011. Both men worked really hard, including a huge Ziggler flying elbow off the top rope through a table outside and eventually falling to the Claymore. SummerSlam was then announced for August 23rd, so that's almost definitely happening at the Performance Center as reported, and the main event saw the swamp fight between Braun Strowman and Wyatt family era Bray Wyatt, which got a brilliant Firefly Funhouse setup segment earlier, where Bray teased the most disgusting, horrific footage we've ever seen, and then played the awful karaoke segment from SmackDown two weeks ago. The actual match took a few minutes to warm up, filmed in WWE's clunky cinematic style, but once Bray started monologuing to a shackled Strowman, revealing that he's been trapped inside the fiend's head all this time, and defeating Braun might be his way out, I was completely hooked in by Wyatt's larger creative vision and lore. Just like the WrestleMania match with John Cena, the Swamp Fight had an incredibly satisfying attention to larger character arc detail, with references to the Wyatt family's past, a snake alluding to the excellent Viper in the family storyline, and even Braun's team Little Big with Alexa Bliss, where she turned up as sister Abigail, hinting that Strowman had always loved her, which was all interspersed with ridiculous action, like Braun setting a man on fire. At the end, Strowman thought he had won, throwing Wyatt in the swamp once and for all, and in his defense, so did WWE, with the copyright logo appearing in the bottom right. But then Bray jumped out with a mandible claw and seemingly drowned Strowman to win, I guess? But there was one last awesome moment, where Bray suddenly tried to escape from the swamp himself, before it started to bubble and boil red for the fiend to emerge. There's many ways you can read that, which is part of the brilliance, but I'm hoping that means the fiend now has full control of Bray's psyche, and he can go on a monster run for the title. So that was the horror show at Extreme Rules in about 10 minutes. What do you think of the pay-per-view? Let me know in the comments down below because I'll be replying from out of Rollins vomit. This was a weird ass show. 
even by WWE lockdown standards. But that's always what I expected. That's how they promoted it. I never had any hopes for Rollins vs Mysterio because it was an impossible task. They literally told you it was a horror show over and over again. So I think I enjoyed it more than most. I thought the in-ring work throughout was very good to great. I didn't mind the Asuka vs Banks finish. And I actually got a lot out of the Swamp fight. Hopefully I don't get too much heat for this, especially from Tony Khan, he does pay our checks. Because I really quite like the show, especially at two and a half hours. So for me, Extreme Rules is four out of five. What are the 10 worst mistakes WWE ever made with John Cena? Find out in Adam Blompier's latest list video by clicking it on the right. And a bunch of ex-WWE stars have debuted for Impact. Click the video beneath that to watch my review of Slammiversary. Super kick the subscribe button for daily wrestling news videos straight to your home screen. I've been Ollie Davis and that was wrestling.